It could be the gift of a gentle and kind spirit, a gift of being a Barnabas. You know what being a Barnabas means? Barnabas was the guy who, when he came into the room, made you feel good about yourself. He was an encourager. Okay, now he wasn't a flatterer. He was an encourager. Now let's take this example between Barnabas and Paul. As you would think Paul was an encourager, but Paul was zealous. And Paul could be hard-nosed. How many of you know the story about Barnabas, Paul, and John Mark? That John Mark accompanied them on the missionary journey. John Mark and Barnabas, I believe they might have been relatives, okay? They weren't relatives, they were close, because it was Barnabas that brought John Mark. Now, partway through this missionary journey, John Mark had had enough. He either got sick or it was too hard for him, and he went back home. Okay? Now, when they went to go on their second missionary journey, who do you think Barnabas said, well, let's go get John Mark? And what did Paul say? No way. And, no, I don't think so. And Barnabas said, yes, we can use him. And Paul said, no. He left. And the contention between them became so great that they never worked together again. Didn't mean that they weren't united in heart. Didn't mean that they didn't work complementary. But Barnabas went this way and Paul went that way. But let me ask you a question. Was Paul always against John Mark? Or did he ever reconcile with him? He tells you in Timothy to bring John Mark because he's helpful to me. Okay? John Mark. Paul said no, Barnabas said yes, Barnabas was an encourager. That may be the gift that God has given me. God gives each one of us talents and gifts to use to edify and to build up His church. Find out what your gift is and use it to God's glory. Okay, so let's look at... Mark chapter 16, verse 16. Mark 16. Mark 16, verse 16. <clears throat> Are these words in red in your Bible? Yes. yes. So who's speaking that? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be what? Amen. So what must a person do to prepare for baptism? He must prepare, study, and he must believe. He must believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that Jesus is our substitute. And the Bible uses the word propitiation, meaning that Jesus took our place. It is by His righteousness that we are saved. So, believing and faith go hand in hand. You have to have faith that Jesus can do for you what you can never do for yourself. That is the gospel. That Jesus will give you His righteousness and He will take your unrighteousness. Okay, one last verse. How many of you are hungry? Turn with me to uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2. Acts 2, verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be what? baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So this verse tells us that to be baptized we must repent. Right? What does that word repent actually mean? It's a 180 degree turn. Okay? That when you repent of your sins 
Not only are you sorry for those sins, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, you make a change in your life. And you don't continue to live the same way you did before. You don't continue to treat people the way you did before. If you are abusive to your family, you repent and you change. If you are an alcoholic, you repent and you change. If you are a thief, a murderer, a liar, you repent and you change. Through the power of the indwelling Christ, He can give you victory over that old life. One more text. It's going to be one um, chapter over. Chapter 3, verse 19. What does it say there? Repent, therefore, and be what? <laughs> Conversion will never come unless there is true repentance. And this is why God has to start the judgment with His own people first. Judgment begins where? At the house of God. Why does God judge His own people first? To see if their confession and their conversion is actually real and true. Okay? So, let's look at 19 again. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be what? So that the times of refreshings may come from the presence of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, this is why we baptize through immersion. And this is why you can't just say, okay, I want to be baptized. Why there's a process to this. Because number one, you need to know Jesus Christ, who you're being baptized into. Two, you need to know what Jesus Christ taught. And you have to follow that teaching. And those that are working with you to prepare you for baptism have to be able to discern whether your repentance and your conversion is true and powered by the Holy Spirit. And finally, with the Adventist Church, you have to understand what you're being baptized into. Because a lot of people come in and get baptized and then they leave when they realize what they join. Because this this Faith family requires something from you. And a lot of churches don't require anything from you today. You can sit in a pew week after week, year after year, and not do anything. And never change your life and never draw closer to Christ. But in the Adventist church, there is something required of you. What's required is that you draw closer and mature in Jesus Christ. That you're living a life of sanctification. That your conversion and your repentance is real. Because I do not want it on my head. The responsibility of bringing somebody in here who wasn't truly converted. Yeah. This is why we still have standards. And this is why we hold to those standards. God has called you out of the pig pen. And he's called you into a new life. A life of righteousness. A life of joy. And a life of fellowship. Do you realize that there... There are people here today. There are people all around the world who have given up everything. Family, jobs, security, inheritances to be a part of Jesus Christ and His remnant church. But Jesus promises you that whatever you give up, He will restore to you a hundredfold. Amen. Think about this. If you give it up family and friends, that's one family. How many families are here today? Jesus will give you a hundredfold. This is why you become a part of the body of Christ. And this is why we're called to love each other so that the world can see that our confession is true. Because a lot of people give up a lot of things to be good. I know, I know from experience. And I never regret anything. But I also realize that when you join this church, you're joining a church full of sinners. If you're looking for perfection, you're not going to find it here. But you will find acceptance. You will find love. And if you stay long enough, you will find Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Closing him. That one's right, right? 340? Yeah, I think it's right. Number 340? 
glad you made a mistake on 
that you will allow her to see the gifts and the talents that you have given her, that she may continue to be a blessing to your church, and that she will bring disciples, or make disciples, of the people that she meets. Father, I pray that you will bless her, that you will bless her family, that you give her health and strength, and that she will be a strong witness for you. For this we ask and pray, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Come walk with me.